trauma is trauma whether you choose to call it PTSD or CPTSD or something else both of these are life-changing and both of these if left unresolved can greatly affect mental health state of well-being and quality of life many people can overcome trauma and not let it affect their health while others can struggle for months and even years I've seen and heard some medical practitioners refer to PTSD and CPTSD as um, often occurring after a scary event. This for me conjures up a vision of a night out with friends, all going down to the local cinema to watch the latest Halloween movie that might be a little scary. For those of us that have PTSD and CPTSD, we know that's not how it is. GPs, websites and other news outlets that say things like that may be well-meaning, but it's evident that they've never had to deal with either PTSD or CPTSD. So why are they giving advice about something they've never really experienced and know little about? Well, they don't know. They're trying to help with what little they do know and let's face it, it's not much. It's not their fault. You've gone to the GP for advice, for help, and a cure for your condition. Five minutes beforehand, they were dealing with Mr. Jones and his winter flu injection. And five minutes later, they'll be speaking to Mrs. Smith about a hip replacement. Here you are in the middle of those two appointments saying, I feel like SH1T and I wanna die. They don't have time to deal with you, but it's evident to them that you need help and have some sort of mental illness because normal people don't say those sort of things. Well, what is normal? The word normal means different things to different people anyway. What happens when you try and tell a doctor how you're feeling and what you're experiencing in five minutes? Well, not a lot. You get given a prescription for an antidepressant and a couple of numbers to ring for a chat with a mental health team. When you call the numbers that you've been given, they give you an appointment that's weeks away and in some areas in the UK, months away. And the antidepressants zonk you out so much that you lose days, let alone hours, and they're addictive. Now, we're all different and we all have experienced different kinds of trauma. So there's no such thing as one size fits all. But what really helps is talking to someone that has PTSD and CPTSD, listening to them, learning from them and taking their advice. You can see that something they're doing seems to be working because they seem normal to you. And what they're saying seems to make sense to you. Well, that's what I found. Oh, in case you don't know, I have CPTSD. I was diagnosed with possible PTSD by a general practitioner a few years back. But after doing my own research, I found that the name for what I have is CPTSD. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder, or some say childhood post-traumatic stress disorder. Both names seem to fit in my case, um, <laughs> as it is complex and it did start in childhood. It started when I was six, I'm now 60, so that's a long time. I didn't have CPTSD all the time. I was actually helping myself and curing myself without knowing it for some years. However, I still didn't know what CPTSD was and I don't think anyone else did either. So it was only a matter of time before a bit more trauma came round the corner and off we went again for another round in the ring. That's the best way I can describe fighting CPTSD. It's like being in a boxing match. You feel exhausted after the fight and drained. Just when you start to feel a little bit better and a little bit stronger, suddenly that bell goes off again and you're back in the ring for another boxing bout. This time, a completely different set of emotion comes up and it feels like Groundhog Day over and over again. I took a course on understanding mental health, which covered PTSD, 
addictions, bipolar disorder, stress, depression, OCD, anxiety, schizophrenia, and multiple personality disorder. I'm not meaning to brag, but I actually found I could relate to all of them. No wonder they call it complex. It's not the end of the world, and there is a way to live with it. Since so little is known about CPTSD, I've decided to share my experiences and my recovery in the hope that it may be of use to someone. Even if it's only one person, then it would have been worthwhile. I don't need to list all the symptoms and possible causes for CPTSD. You can Google them for yourself. My recovery began, or should I say, further advanced with crappy childhood fairy and her wonderful community. Like me, she has CPTSD and she speaks so much sense to me. I followed her guidance and I will always be grateful to the universe for sending her. She's on YouTube, so please visit her channel. I'm now writing a book about my experiences. Um, it's been an interesting 60 years.